Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We start today with Cam Newton. Cam said all the right things last night following his embarrassing performance and an embarrassing loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Newton sounded nothing like the petulant child we saw in the aftermath of the 2016 Super Bowl. It's hard to look defensive guys in their eyes after a game like this, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, offensively, we don't hold up our end of the bargain. You're not going to hear no type of reasons why tonight didn't go as planned. I have to be better. No matter what physical condition I'm in, no matter what foot, shoulder, I ain't get the job done tonight, man, and it's, and it's frustrating. I wish I could say something other than that, but, you know, that's, that's the facts. And, you know, I'm an I'm a, I'm a extremely brutally honest person, you know, with people, and I'm extremely brutally honest with myself. And I got, it's time for me to look myself in the mirror and, you know, do some real soul searching because I had opportunities tonight, and um, I didn't get it done. Uh, perhaps Newton has been transformed by therapy. If so, his therapist has some more work to do. Mm. Newton's words are fine, but I won't believe any of them until Newton cuts that star boy, I can't feel my face mop off the top of his head oh. and cuts out the pre and post game Mary Poppins routine. Oh. Maybe there's beauty behind Newton's madness. Problem is, no one wants to see it at a football game. Women are making memes about Cam Newton's attempt to be a fashionista. He's a laughing stock. You're not leading a football team coming to work and leaving work dressed like that. I'm sorry. Mm. Any good leader will tell you, in order to lead, you have to know your audience, know your constituency, know your base, <clears throat> and cater your message to them. At its core, football is a three-hour expression of toxic masculinity. The locker rooms are filled with boys and men looking to loose the Neanderthal that resides within all of us. Cam Newton was at his best when he channeled his inner Superman when he was leaping tall linebackers with a single bound and talking tall trash with first down and touchdown celebrations. Everybody wants to talk about Cam's body. Is he healthy? Is his body right? Cam's issue is between the ears. His mind isn't right, not for football. Mm. Whether you're Omar Little or Avon Barksdale, there's, <clears throat> there's a mentality you have to embrace to play football at a high level in the NFL. Cam's not in that mindset. He's distracted or bored or the game is no longer fun to him. It's probably all three. At age 30, and after suffering several injuries, Cam is being asked to play the game from the pocket. For someone with Cam's physical gifts, that's a tedious, boring endeavor. Cam likes action, danger, freedom, and attention. The way Tom Brady plays the game is no fun for Cam. The Brady way relies on routine, discipline, precision, efficiency, and order. Cam's star boy hairstyle <laughs> has to be maintained. You have to give that thought and energy. Tom Brady and Drew Brees aren't wasting time during the week thinking about their hair. On game days, they're not standing in front of their locker stall, untying and tying a Mary Poppins scarf around their head. Mm. It's a waste. It's a handful of NFL and NBA players who seek attention by trolling us with their fashion choices and appearance. They're Dennis Rodman lights. They want the world to know they're still wrestling with their identity. It's not remotely unusual for people in their 20s and 30s to still be working through those issues. Most of us just don't do it at work. <laughs> we do it amongst our friends and family in our personal lives. We play a role at work. Now that he can't roam free, Cam doesn't like the role of NFL quarterback. It's too restrictive. It's hiding the beauty behind his madness. Well, no Cam is serious about football again when he cuts the hair and returns the scarves to Aunt your Mama. All right, joining the desk now are Fox Sports NFL analyst T.J. Hushmanzada and LeVar Arrington. What? Marcellus, <laughs> start with you. Is Cam's hair in outrageous fashion oh, God. proof he's not serious about being a franchise quarterback? I throw a question back at you, yeah. big dog. Yeah. Don't take you that much time to get that right, huh? Not at Take's all. Up. That thing crispy, though. <laughs> <laughs> that thing crispy. Little baby kid in play. Look, was he serious about 
being a franchise quarterback in 2015 when he was dressing different and started these waves in terms of what his fashion looked like and he won the MVP, was he dressing different? Yeah. Was he balling? Yeah. Fox, Fox furs and going out there doing all kind of crazy stuff that started this wave and he balled out of control. So I want to disconnect the fashion from what's happening in performance. It's crazy that everyone's reaction is what we're supposed to be insulted by. Uh, anyone in self-expression, Cam Newton right now, is he supposed to be insulted that y'all don't like it? Uh, I learned a long time ago that mockery is a compass to success. What that means is when they laughing at you, keep going, man. You might be on to something. I remember when they laughed at Michael Jordan. Uh, they laughed at Michael Jordan in high school. Hmm? No? And they laughed at Michael Jordan when he started his shoe with Nike. And to the tune, he had to actually pay fines to just wear the shoe because they didn't match in the color coordination of the NBA. They were laughing then. Tom Brady got laughed at in the combines and sixth round draft choice. He didn't even have any talent, athletic ability. Uh, you take it to the real world. Mark Zuckerberg got laughed at when he left Harvard. <laughs> and Steve Jobs got laughed at when he said, I'm gonna make my own computer. Like, keep laughing. Like, let's not connect that what this guy is doing is his own expression, which is harmless, unless you just are not comfortable in your own skin, and then connect it to his performance, because when he did this before and he balled, we didn't hear a word. I've never seen this. You haven't seen that? No. Well, no, he changes I've his outfit every time. It. That's called being a fashionista. You uh, know what, yeah. what happened is this, is what you just said. If you're going to dress like this and you're... He basically started NFL guys going to press conferences and, and dressing nice mm -hmm. and outrageous and just grabbing attention. You have to play well. And when you don't play well, you're going to get these... Type, oh, you're not focused on football. I don't mind it, personally. This is his style. He started doing it. I, I have no problem with it at all. You can lead like that. You got you, everybody on the internet making fun of you, laughing at you. Got women the, sports. The writers problem laughing. with it is, in with society, they've never seen this before from a quarterback. And so, if you've never seen it, everybody's looking at it like, "What is he doing?" Now, what I do it, I'm not wearing a scarf. I'm not putting that on my head. But that's what he wants to do. Is it distracting them from being a franchise quarterback? It isn't. He's just not playing well right now, so it gives people something to talk about. That's just what it is, oh. and he knows that. Mm. And if he starts playing well... You can be Dennis Rodman at quarterback. If you balling, you can. If you balling, you can be anything. I'll say this. I'm, I'm, I'm around this new generation, this new era of millennials. Yes, he does. First answer to the question. Yes, he is serious about being a franchise quarterback, and I think he wants... I think he wants nothing more than to be able to end this season off with winning a Super Bowl. I, I do believe that that's his main focus. But when you look at the other things that he's doing, well, he's dealing with that generation of, of young men. He's, he's putting on the fashion. He's, he's, he's out there in the seven-on-seven -seven world. He's around this all the time. And I think it's more culturally driven. You, know, you made the statement about Tom Brady and the other gentlemen. The Drew, other, Brees. Drew Brees. Drew um, Brees. They 100% put as much effort and time into what it is they're going to wear. It just doesn't come across the same exact way. It's not if you flashy, look, if you boom. look at, uh, take two seconds and look at what Tom Brady is wearing mm. when he's in them press conferences. Boom. It is, it is probably at least five thousand dollar this, six thousand dollar that, and it's usually um, brands that he represents. Mm. And he's he's a high end guy and a high end billboard for those guys. So they do take very very much thought into what it is that they're doing. I just think that when you look at what Cam is doing, I think it's very much in the realm of it does push the envelope it's 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 very uh very colorful it's very expressionary and and sometimes i i think and this is just me i think older generations a lot of times like you'll hear older guys the one thing i'm okay with keep your pants pulled up <laughs> but but as far as just saying okay well he has a bonnet on his head. As an old head, you sit there and say, man, that's oh, weird. Oh, this is what young people are doing. That's you weird. at a high school. Are there, are young there guys people, showing, they show up, they're wearing bonnets people, on your football team? Young people Are they wearing days, bonnets on your football team? They, they do a no. lot. They do a no. lot. Let, no. let me tell you something. Fashion-wise, but coming. you'll see it. But hey, you Seth will Rocky see it. Hey, it's coming. The first one I saw with you. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. And that's the point. But you know what's crazy? What's crazy about this is, like, it's what he wants to do. For us to even put the restrictions on there and say you can't leave. I remember there was a time when people questioned if Steve Young could really take over the 49ers. Why? Because he was a cerebral guy. He was a thinker. You ever been around Steve Young, you know we about to leave this planet for a minute in terms of conversation and depth. 
And people question that. Like, you can lead any type of way as long as the performance is what dictates it. You don't have to change That's the problem. your ex No, it's not a problem. Stop that. That's a bad message to tell a kid. Oh, be yourself until that is not working in performance. No, I'm you not have to saying that's that? a problem. What I'm saying is the narrative is it's a okay, problem. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Because when you wear the expressionary clothes and the colors, it's perceived as, oh, he putting all this time into this instead of football. But it's a misperception, and this is crazy. This is the worst misperception. That the players can't take advantage of their brand, enhance their brand, when the NFL's priority is protection of its brand and its shield. So uh, a league is not supposed to leave any stones unturned or any money on the table, but a player is supposed to. Look what happens when he does this. Russell Westbrook has a line at Barney's in New York. Look what happens when you talk he ain't about... Winning. Go ahead. He ain't I'm not winning. To cut you off. Winning in what? A championship or winning in life and winning in the game? Is he a Hall of Famer? That's not winning? Yeah, uh, he's not winning games. There are people who have won championships and are lesser than a Russell Westbrook. So I don't even want to get into that conversation. We could have it. Dion is one of the most colorful dressing dudes when he played the game. Did he a play lot, quarterback? A lot of people. No, did he, he did not. He did not. He did not. This I is a quarterback. That. And look, man, my overall point here, I'm telling Cam's bored. They, they got him on the field and told, <laughs> stay in the pocket, Cam. Again, when you have all those physical gifts and they put them restrictions, no, we want you to play the game the way Tom Brady does. And he's trying, but it's not his style. Everything he's showing you in terms of his fashion, in terms of everything, his hair, the whole thing, he's trying to tell you, I'm one of these guys that needs to be a, in the attention. I need diversity. I need to be free. Was all he bored last year when he was 6-2? In the MVP conversation, wearing crazy stuff? It's a marathon, Marcellus. Yeah. It's a marathon. So and why that's you great that he was 6-2. Yeah. Did he get to 12-4 uh, uh, and, no. and, and into the postseason? He's lost, what, eight straight games? It's been four straight games. He hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. And, again, you're making my point when you bring up Steve uh, Young. If we can question Steve Young about being cerebral, I can damn sure question a quarterback that's trying to lead a game that's built on this kind of toxic uh, masculinity showing up to the game and post-game press conferences dressed like Queen Elizabeth. Oh, hold on. And I'm looking at female sports writers make this exact same point. He's turned himself into a laughing stock. That's not a great lane for a quarterback. That didn't happen to Jordan. It didn't happen to Brady. All these people you write on, Kobe Bryant, any these people that are different, they're not laughing stocks. Cam Newton uh -huh. is driving into that laughing stock lane. He's bored. He's bored by the style of play he's having to play. Greatness at that quarterback position and just greatness in life is very boring and routine. It's, it's, and that boring and routine does not fit Cam's personality. He's a wide receiver. You, you, first of all, you actually make my point when I made the point about Steve Young. Those were the wrong questions to ask. They, no, they asked weren't. him, they asked him, and they were proven wrong. Cam Newton has already proven them wrong. You already have seen him in the same marathon do these same things and pull up a great performance. Oh. So if he wears a sweater, he gonna ball? But If no. he just wears a nice little No, 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 no. So I'm not saying sweater. he changed the color. The mindset has to change. And get, Cam's into extra. He wants to be extra. He's into extra stuff. He wants to run like a running back and celebrate like Superman and do all that. And they've taken it away from him. And again, and so they or injuries. injuries? Injuries is not they. Injuries, <laughs> coaching, age, whatever has taken it away from him. You can see it in his personality. And again, the quarterback position at the money that they're paying, it's not a one season, one off thing. They're, they want you to string that together for five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 20 years. And, and, and again, I think everybody is so focused on brand, brand and my platform, and, my, and they haven't factored in like, hey man, at these prices that the NFL's paying now, Dak's about to get 35 million a year. Mm. We don't care about your brand in this other platform. And who has the biggest brand as a football player? Tom Brady. And, and no so, way. Uh, uh, no way. No, Ooh. that's up for debate. It's Odell Beckham. It's Odell, Odell Beckham. No, no, I didn't say who's more famous. Yeah. <laughs> Odell Beckham's brand is what? <laughs> TB12 is what? TB12 getting paid by the NFL, damn near. But, but it's what the said. TB12, so the, I, no. TB12 has synergy with those football. I still think that. I, like still real just, I feel like, and I'm, I'm just as old as you guys, so yeah. don't take offense to this. I just oh, I'm feel, older than you, I, but go ahead. I just feel like I'm listening to, like, this is an old man's conversation. It is. Thank you. 
it's an old man's conversation. Yes. So to older to an older generation of people, you make a hundred percent sense. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? Marcellus, Mar uh, not Marcellus. Uh -oh, Lamar, I appreciate Lamar, that. That's a compliment. Lamar, Lamar. Right. <laughs> you know what football is and the quarterback position is? Oh. It's an old man's game and it's an old not man's game. Not, not, it's not anymore. Not anymore. I, uh, the, 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 the position is changing yes. just like the narrative hey, man, is changing. When any of these yes. guys that have changed the position Call me when they win six Super Bowls. Well, it's let got, me know. It's what? Got, it's let got, me know. You got to give it time. You got. You got. Right here. Let you, me know when it happens. Cult, I'll flip. Culturally speaking, look at and and I hate to you know make it like where you're yeah. borderlining it where we're talking about white and black because I don't want it to turn into a racial situation because, because it's not. Guys like Baker Mayfield walk the same type of line where they may do their their expressions in a different way. I, again, I just think that there's a disconnect between what the establishment of of tradition. Let me tell, let me represents this, in call terms me, of now current day. Call me when Lamar Jackson walks into the press conference in a bonnet. <laughs> call, call me then. That's when I'll believe but Cam didn't do that. Well, Cam did not me. do that well, in, in his year me. one. Cam didn't do that well, in year Lamar's one or year two. Well, Lamar's in year two. Right. Well, I'm just well, saying. Call, yeah. Russell Wilson, what year guys, is he? Call guys me evolve. when he does it. I think, I think because brands are so important and they mean so much now and the exposure is so amazing with all of this new technology hey, man, that oh, guys oh, are more progressive. They are way more progressive. I got to get my Twitter off, bro. Stop. What? Stop. We're having a conversation what? like in today's modern NFL locker rooms, there aren't guys that don't play for the Carolina Panthers going, did y'all see Cam? Oh, 100%. Yeah, and they yeah. But what's new about that? That's, that's 100%. 100%. Well, well, that's well, new. On, but, 100%. But then there's a whole the bunch. When, when you saw that, you didn't bunch. think that? But then oh, yeah, there's but a whole bunch of them that? taking pictures with jokes. Cam, and they posting it like they're in front of the, the, the airplane. It's almost... With it's the bonnet. A, it's a, yes, it's a deal where these guys take pictures together getting on and off of the airplanes, the different things swap. like that. I ain't seen the no, bonnet. No, 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 they, you know they're giving We did that when I played. Right, that's what I'm You'll saying. So the, well, you had a 20 The guys on the team but are selling some They, they, they getting on him about what he wears. They also they, compete to be best dressed. And a lot of thank guys you. these days really, really take pride. He's not winning. And take, I, I, I think now, it's best for dress debate. is subjective, right? Yeah, that's I think very it's up for subjective. Y'all yes, gotta absolutely. understand. First of all, we we've moved in, in so many places. But sure. let's go back to the quarterback position. How it's evolved. Yeah. Sure. Highest paid quarterback is Russell Wilson. Mm. That's a 2.0 under six foot quarterback. Mm. You saying the game ain't changed? The position has changed. Not only has the position changed in X and O's and demands, but even the culture of the position. You can express yourself in a many a different ways. I remember. This is a parallel to me. J.J. Watt came out with all these workout videos. Remember he was in the cabins and doing all these workout videos? Mm -hmm. And people used to come at J.J. Watt sideways. Why is he always showing us him working out and looking crazy? Mockery, right? Next thing you know, A.B., Cam Newton, all these guys have production teams, OBJ doing it. You know what the positive of this is? There are now high schoolers. When they work out, they trying to film it too. It has created a positive peer pressure for you to do your thing. Do it your way. And now you're going to make that a negative because he's into his self-expression, which really doesn't have a connection well, to, to his me, thing. To me, some things are on brand, some things are off brand. To and again, what? And so to me, the whole workout the thing, the JJ, is, yeah. that's on brand for football. That plays well in a football Football has expanded room. over the years of what is on brand. We used to have no laundry no, no, no. between double days Mar Marcellus, and smoking in the locker room. There's no question about that. I'm just saying this here, it's off brand particularly for the quarterback. And it's, mm. I don't think it's going to be a part of some new brand when you, when you say, during Cam's when career. When you say off-brand, is it because predominantly coming up, there haven't been many African-American quarterbacks that would express themselves. Uh, can, we, can we stop? Can, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. not to do it. not to do it. I just want to stop. Please, God. No, 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 but TJ, please. And, and LeVar, please. <laughs> That's that we, pastor, uh, please, right there. It is. It really <laughs> is. Because <laughs> I'm Lord. Because get, I just want to, I just want, I don't want people watching at home. <laughs> get them. I don't want people watching at home going, oh, so the black thing to do as a black man is put a bonnet on your head. That's not that's, us. Nah, that's not our no, culture. No, no, I'm not, stop it. Stop it. I'm not done. I'm not body. done. Stop it. Stop it. And so, again, that's a Queen Elizabeth thing as far as I... That's <laughs> theirs. 
<laughs> and so if, if Cam wants to do that, that's fine. Oh, but don't put that on us. Fashionably and don't quit forward. It. Fashionably forward no. has been hey, Jason, essentially related to a cultural the, deal. It is a cultural clothing. deal. Minus the, minus the bonnet clothing. and the hair. I'm the king that, of that. I'm My not daddy's a bonnet the king of that. guy myself. I would not want to do a bonnet deal. Have I worn scarves on my head when it was cold outside and the scarf went all the way down, fashionably speaking? I, yes, I he had. He us. I, I, just just I, I never <laughs> tied it under my chin. All I'm saying but that is, just ain't my I, deal. I just get tired of whatever some athlete does. My guy, oh, that's the new black thing. Just because one person did it. Uh, no, uh, do I, it. I just think is 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 when you drive trends, when you drive culture, it's always going to be turbulent. Oh yeah, he's trying to drive some culture. Yes, it's, he it's is. always going to be turbulent and I'm saying along football the way. Hey, is man. going to reject that. No, they not. It. You remember when Jordan came out with the shoe, and you know why he got fined? Because he didn't have a two. That's the league fining him. That's not. And the you know why it became room. rebellion? That's not his peers. It was rebellion in the whole NBA culture. We are used to two tone. Remember when Magic had a shoe and those plain converses? Bad and analogy. It's not a bad analogy because sometimes you got to stress the lines for it to become norm. And if the dude is doing something that's stretching the lines look, to become norm, why okay. are you upset at that? Because again, look, Dennis Rodman tried to stress the norms, and most of the NBA rejected it. That's not the norm. Now, some of Dennis Rodman, all everybody all tatted up. Yeah, that, that's part of I the mean, norm. I mean, about the same. Don't act like it all went away. But again, that, that, don't act like it all went away. The though, that, that's not going to become the norm. That, that's, for, that's not going to become the norm. <laughs> Now, we, we're talking He's that. saying it's going to be the norm for me. We would have never thought zippers, saying, zippers on have, jeans, look, skinny he, jeans. You would have never thought that that would have been a norm. Yeah. Who would have went there and said, I'm going to have zippers and biker pants? Like, yeah, like, with all the, my the, clothes the, Come hey, on, man. man. I'm just telling you this. At that position he plays, revolution. it's a leadership position. It's revolution. That does not play <laughs> in a football locker room. Hey, put it like this. If I was a Panther, fake the funk if you want to. If I was a Panther, he'd be my leader. And I'd be like, go get it, Cam. Throw some more touchdowns. Time's I don't give a damn what you wear. No, 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 no. What you would I'm, say no, is the respect is in the bottom. Your first touchdown is what you would say. You haven't thrown one oh, in a while. Oh, you know what I wouldn't say? You, you know what I wouldn't say to the MVP? I wouldn't let that leave my mouth out to the MVP. And if I was sitting on that level, then I would. Save the show, Jesus. Hold it, hold it, hold it. My God. How many guys in that locker room do you think were there in 2015 and give a damn about his MVP? Really? Oh, you, oh, you think all that equity is gone? You? Hell yeah! Ha. He ain't won in eight starts. You ain't starts. been in the locker room. He ain't won in eight starts. That's okay. the equity's gone. Oh, hey, you he know ain't what? thrown a touchdown and in eight four games. Of, and eight Hall of Famers are in the Hall of Fame who have lost eight or more games. So what you talking about? Eight straight? You, yeah, eight Hall of Famers, brother. Eight straight. And, and, yes, eight straight. In the prime of And Warren Moon did it twice. Got quiet for a Let reason. Me know Come on, man, don't do Let me, me know like that. Let me know when he goes four straight games without throwing <laughs> a touchdown. Oh, Respect is in the person, not the, Stick not around. the fashion. <laughs> Week one is in the books, but DraftKings isn't finished celebrating with some huge fantasy football contests. For week two of the football season, DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy football, is giving new users a free shot at over $1.5 million in prizes with your first deposit when you put in the code SPEAK during sign-up. Draft your lineup and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, throw, and catch means more with a DraftKings lineup on the line. It's simple. Just draft your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Plus, all new and existing users can get a deposit bonus up to $500. That's some extra cash to play with this football season. Download the DraftKings app now and use the code SPEAK for a limited time, both new and existing users can get a deposit bonus up to $500. New users, don't forget to enter the code SPEAK, that's S-P-E-A-K, to get a free shot at over $1.5 million in prizes with your first deposit. That's code SPEAK, only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Deposit bonuses requires a 25 times playthrough. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. With Lock and Wiley, TJ Hushmanzada and LeVar Arrington are back. Mm. Time now for a big story. Let's move to Jameis Winston. Where's my bonnet? Who was <laughs> facing a lot of doubters coming into last night's game, but was able to pull out a tough win on the road against the Panthers. Coach Bruce Arians and Jameis was spot on last night, which went a long way to snapping the quarterback's 12-game road losing streak, and it didn't hurt that he got off to a hot start. In his 12 straight road losses, Jameis was terrible in the first half, which left the Bucs playing from behind. But a respectable first half last night let them <laughs> let them play most of the night with a lead. 
All right, the question here is more confident in Jameis after last night's win. We're a little time restricted here, guys. Yeah. So. I mean, look, congratulations for him breaking his 12-game losing road streak. That's good. But y'all acting like he really was out there balling. And I thought it was just a solid performance. It bought him another week um, in terms of criticism. He doesn't get it. But don't forget, four of their first five possessions were punts. Um, until the last drive of the first half, that's when Jameis did some things, and he did a couple things in the second half. But all this said, based on expectations of who he's supposed to be and what we have seen in these first two weeks, I still think he's behind the eight ball in terms of what he's, what he's doing in performance. If we're just talking about what we just saw, of course you, you have to be optimistic and a little more confident. The first game was terrible. You throw two pick sixes in the comeback mm. last night and play the way he played. On the road. He made yeah, yeah. some really good throws, perfect throws down the field to Mike Evans, and that's what you want your court. When you got a former quarterback as your offensive coordinator and Byron Leffords, and you got Bruce Arians coming in, you want to see this type of progress to see if he can kind of turn that corner. So, yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic and I'm confident after yesterday. Uh, I think it's more of an indictment on the Carolina Panthers' defense and their scheme versus what Jameis Winston is able to do. <laughs> I, I still just, make the I just don't, he still does and have to make the throws on their defense. On their defense yeah. coach. Because again, I think if I'm playing against, if I'm scheming against a quarterback like Jameis Winston, I think we have success. I think you pressure him. I think you force him into the type of throws that. An indictment that, on their defense. on their defense. Yes, I, I think is. Lamar, well, what I NFL did you play in? You give up 20 <laughs> points. And somehow your defense is indicted. Yes, that, I think How? it's more about No, the indictment was on the what... quarterback on the other team. They gave up 20 points. Yeah, well, I The I, other again, team turned. The again. quarterback turned the ball over. Again, they gave up to, 20 give up, to give up 20 points at home against a Jameis Winston led offense leads me to believe, Ooh, based off of my information. Wow. Oh, he went standard, deeper. You shouldn't have pressed him. That, I'm that calling this Marcellus is, this again. Is not, <laughs> I mean, Ooh. I just I think it's more of an indictment on what the, the Carolina defense was not able to do versus what Jameis Winston is capable of doing. Completely yeah. disagree with you. That's I'm fine. with I'm sure. with LeVar. I'm with LeVar. Man, yeah. look, dog. Marcellus, Marcellus, and he all <laughs> we all I mean, like the him. nerve of this <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm with Marcellus and TJ in terms of like, it was all right. It's all right. <laughs> it was all right. But like five odds. <laughs> right. all right. yeah, and look, it. he threw a ball over the middle that I can't remember the receiver's name. It hit him in the back of the end zone, went through his hand. Yeah, that's It would have stressed it to it. Oh, yeah, Perryman, yeah, which would have stressed that. it yeah. to a two uh, score lead. Yep. And then I would have been on board. With like, oh, he put 27 points on the board on the road, and that and, was a and good they throw. won. It was a good Dang. throw. Uh, but overall, look, man, Carolina was what a yard away from winning that game. Yep. When they didn't play all that well, and so I, 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 this buys again. I think it was TJ said buys him another week. I said that. Yeah, buys yeah, the other guy. That <laughs> <saying>. Marcelo <laughs> buys him another week. But that's about it. Can I say this? Yeah. My favorite sport is track. Why? Because it's black or white. I'm better than you. I'm faster than you. I don't want to hear about your team, your philosophy, your coaching, your resources. It's just binary. If we're going to give him a binary assessment, that's not great. That's mm -hmm. not good, actually. Think about it. His coach even told on himself, Bruce Arians, by saying, you know what we saw out of Jameis? Which is some self-esteem assessment. He was spot on. <laughs> 16 of 25, one touchdown is spot on. No way. What? It's a step in he, the right direction. No but that's what I'm no saying. Way. I'm not built to hear these, no like, way. oh, confidence-building assessments. You ask me a question, am I more confident? I'm like, damn, that ain't Jameis. If your quarterback throws two pick sixes tonight and then come back next week and win the game, you're going to say, okay. Okay, we're we moving game, forward. Though. Though. To build I want to win the game. Yeah. I'm trying to build the program and win the game. That doesn't necessarily answer if it is a long-term solution. So when you Pasadena, just won. They're 0-2. Yeah, I know. When Pasadena High on, School dropped go. 40 points on y'all. <laughs> 41. Indictment. That's an indictment on me. Oh, it was? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I just asked everybody. I got you, Lamar. <laughs> Given this performance or these two performances, is this going to get him a contract extension? No. Hey, guys. This is Jason Whitlock from Speak for Yourself. Are you ready for what's ahead? You can't always predict the future, but you can game plan for it. Generations of families and businesses have harnessed the power of Pacific to help them reach their unique goals. Whether you need to save enough money to meet your needs, ensure your family is protected, or make sure you don't run out of money, Pacific Life has a variety of financial solutions that can help. Pacific Life counts more than half of the 100 largest U.S. companies as its clients and has been named one of the 2019 world's most ethical companies by the Ethisphere Institute. 
protecting what matters most to people for 150 years and counting. That's the power of Pacific. Ask a financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you game plan for the future or visit PacificLife.com. TJ Husmanzada is back. We're joined now by Super Bowl champion Brady Papinga. Oh, you got his name right. All right, let's move to San Francisco. Wonder why. (laughs) Where the 49ers (laughs) were able to eke out a win over the Bucs last night. Despite an ugly mm. oh last week I'm sorry despite an ugly performance of Jimmy Garoppolo Jimmy G string was the golden boy when he first arrived in the Bay Area, <laughs> but after missing most of the last year and struggling to start this year, mm. Niners general manager John Lynch isn't exactly giving him Jimmy a vote of confidence. Mm. I can tell you we do think very highly of Nick Mullins. We think uh, very highly of C.J. Beathard as well. But we've got a lot of belief in, in Jimmy Garoppolo. And Jimmy's our quarterback. And was it perfect the other day? No. But uh, he brings a lot to the table. And he and our, our team has a lot of belief in him. And uh, we certainly do. We're uh, working hard to try to go out there and be cleaner as a team. And Jimmy is as well. He is our quarterback right now. And, and we're very happy that that's the case. Mm. Mm. Right now is the key word there. And they playing, they're playing the Bengals this week. The Bengals look very good against Seattle, in my opinion. Mm. This is a make-or-break weekend for Jimmy G. I won't go that far make-or-break, but here and right now is the kiss of death. That's as guaranteed as death and taxes. When you hear that and they say that publicly, trust me, privately, they're talking about trades, demotions, cutting you. Everything's on the table when they say the right now because it's not a discussion if Jimmy G is going out there being who Jimmy G is advertised to be. So look at the situation is it's it's interesting with his contract. They can get out of it this year with a pretty much clean break of the 40 million guaranteed unless Jimmy G gets hurt. Then they owe him 16 of the 24 next year. So they're in a pickle. They're like one is he the long term solution. Did we jump on this a little too soon, prematurely? And two, how far do we play him? How long do we play him because of his injury concern? And we might be into some more guaranteed money. It's um, it's very similar to what we just talked about with Jameis Winston. How com- He'll probably get three to four more weeks. Mm. And if he doesn't perform, when you say we think really highly of Nick Mullins, we think highly of C.J. Beathard, and then you hit him with, he's our quarterback right now. Once you say that, Boom. it's Jimmy G., if you don't play well, that right now is going to be no more. You, you, that's it. Since uh, John Lynch has been liar, they're 11 and 22. He feels the pressure, man. He don't know, they got to win games. Right. And he's not winning games, and he's part of the reason they're not winning games. And, and so it's make or break. He probably has three to four more weeks of this. I give him a month or two, and here's the reason why. Two. Yeah, ACL. Mm. Okay, I've had two ACL surgeries, mm. and basically the final step in recovering from an ACL is going out and playing football and having guys falling around your knee and making sure, okay, mentally, this is going to hold up. He's, he's still in that phase to where he's still questioning whether that knee's going to hold up. You got to remember, when you pop your ACL, you're doing something you've done millions of times and all of a sudden your knee slips. So he's in that state of mind right now, and it's going to take a good month or two for him to get out of that funk and fully be himself to where he's not worrying about that knee. At you that think point, they're going to give him that long? They have to because they will not get a good assessment because it, the worst-case scenario for the 49ers is that they get impatient, they, they bench him, they cut him after the season, all of a sudden some <clears> other team picks him up and he dominates. And then the 49ers are looking for a quarterback, and they're like, wait, we just had him under contract. So you got to give him every opportunity – to show that he's the guy. Brady, you got to give him a couple months. Brady, I think you make a great point, but I also think it's a point that, like, John Lynch played this game and Kyle Mm. Shanahan's been around the game forever. They know everything you're talking about. These comments about Nick Mullins and how much we like him and the right now, to me, they're trying to put pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo because they don't like his approach. And, again, there was a time Mm. that I sounded just as crazy talking about Jimmy G as I did talking about Cam Newton. And it was when he was out with the porn star in Beverly Hills getting caught by paparazzi. And I said, oh, man, this dude is extra. That's what you're about. Yeah, I said, Mm. this dude is extra. (laughs) And I was like, this is an indication that maybe he's not a franchise quarterback mentality-wise. And, and, and I said, this could be an issue, because I was all in on Jimmy G. When he got to San Francisco and won those games, I was all in. When that dude popped up with the porn star, I was like, hmm, his mentality's not right. And when I hear John Lynch, I hear, like, 
oh, we need to put some pressure on this dude because his approach isn't right. They know he's struggling trying to come back from a knee. They don't like what they're seeing from him in terms of approach. And Nicky Mullins is very buttoned up, knows the playbook inside and out, has a great relationship with Kyle Shanahan. They don't like this guy's approach. And that's I, what you I, do, though. I was going to say, well, that's yeah. what you do is you, you build it. a culture competition. And the best way to do it, because everybody's on social media following the news clippings about what the GM's saying about you, is you talk about somebody that could potentially take their job. But there's no cultural their competition job. when one guy <laughs> is making 100 something million and the next guy's making right. well, 800000 Not a culture. But, but you, you brought it up, Marcellus. His they contract after this year is done. So yeah. after this year, it's year to year. Let's see what happens. So this is like the perfect time. And you it's give him two months, fire. you're going to owe him $16 million as Marcellus. They owe him 16 million. That's another year. No, they, it's injury guaranteed. Injury. So, so basically, he has to he has to be injured sufficient uh, or severely enough to where he can ever play football. But what Whitlock so was pretty, talking about, it's it's not a real likely. I'm with you, Whitlock. But the distinction between a Cam Newton and a Jimmy G is the equity. Like I'm I'm talking to an MVP and I'm talking to a guy who maybe we gave money too soon to. So there's a little distinction there. What's more interesting than what was said is who it was said to. I used to work in local radio. This was a local radio interview. You're talking yeah. directly yeah. to the source, to your fan base, to the pulse of what the 49ers are. And when you say this to them, you want them riled up for a reason. So this is really an indictment on him in terms of that. And then we've also, we can't forget how many times John Lynch has said Kyle Shanahan is in love with... Nick Mullins. Mm. And Kirk Cousins, who's – we all know how that situation yeah. is going to play out. Yeah. There, so you're talking about next year if he's gone, you're going to be looking for a quarterback? Are you? When Kyle well, Shanahan of is course sitting there, you're like be looking Kirk for a Cousins is out there, and maybe it's not working in Minnesota. So a lot is at play, as yeah. I said in the opening part. When you start hearing right now, everything's on the table, including maybe acquiring another quarterback. Now, depending on how Jimmy G is mentally, he hears this right now. Does he – Ah, get locked in, or does it put pressure on him and he can't perform the way he needs to That's perform? That's what you want to see. You want to so, see if he's well, going to so right, swim. That, that can go. Perfect. This was, like, orchestrated perfectly by John Lynch. And it was by design Well, he said that. that was I, I don't know if perfectly. Smart. I think he's doing what he has to do. Because trust me, before you go public, you've had some private conversations. You, you, you've, you've been like, well, damn, we're not reaching him. This is like him. the last resort almost? Yeah, yes. we're not reaching him one-on-one. -on -one. But he's also smart. John Lynch is a smart guy. He no, no, no. But, but I, look, Kyle Let's Shanahan been through the ringer with Donovan McNabb, went through the ringer with RG3, I think, or is that or RG3? Yeah, that was RG3. And, and, yeah. and so Kyle Shanahan is not scared remotely. He has Even a Manziel. huge... Even Manziel. Remember yeah. Manziel? Has you a, get text message, you got to yeah. play Manziel, and that's has what Has a huge ego. Right so, has yeah. a huge ego. He's not afraid to sit down one-on-one -on -one with Jimmy G and tell him anything. And to me, for, for, for uh, Lynch to go public like this, it hasn't worked. Whatever they've been trying to do to shake this dude up and get him on task and in the right mindset, man, we gave you hundred million dollars. It's been one be week, friend. though. No, it's no, been no, one no, week no, no. since his surgery. I, it's been it's been longer than one week since. No, the I'm surgery. talking like one, an actual yeah. game to where you can assess where no, he's no, at. I, but you don't want to cut bait too soon. That's the worst thing you could do is have a guy in your organization. All of a sudden, say, okay, we're just getting him one or two Brady, weeks. Brady, though. Brady, I, Boom, I get it. Boom, cut bait, and he's gone, and Brady, all of a sudden, he dominates it. elsewhere. I get it. But, Brady, Brady, I get it. Uh -huh. But I'm a journalist. Okay. Things leak for a reason. There's been a reason yeah. why yeah. Mike yeah. Silver's been pushing out, hey, man, they may move on from Jimmy G sooner than you think. Mm. There's a reason. The, these the, Mike Silver's not pulling that out of his rear end. Yeah, he's People fed, involved yeah. are telling him that directly, and there's other people in the media, they keep trying to reach this Jimmy G guy, and he may be unreachable, and he may have shown us that when he showed up here yeah. in Beverly Hills with a porn star. How long ago was that, though? That was Jimmy like 18 months ago. The guy could have That tells you something that about him. To your point but right so here, yeah. to knows? your point, whenever, in PR they teach you this, whenever you want to create a new narrative or create a different reality, don't forget Mother necessity is the mother of invention. Don't forget, I need to do something different because I'm forced back against the wall and change this scope. Like you said, John Lynch is. Uh, mm. But what has he done? Has, has Jimmy some... G gone out so, lately and and, and it doesn't matter. It's do that. already out there. Whoa, 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 whoa. I understand it's already out there, but maybe that's why you haven't heard much about him. Is he's trying to change yeah, that narrative? Uh, yeah. But once you do that, yeah. 
You're saying it's done. Dead. It's now, over. One, let, let, let me just say, we, we got to go, Brady. It? We got to okay. go, Brady. But let me just say this. All you got to do is see me eat once at Thanksgiving. <laughs> you don't got to see it a million different times. It's going dead. Get, I thought you were going to say, oh, you got to see me Brady, eat Brady, I we're done. once. Whitlock and Wiley LeVar Arrington is back with us. Okay. And so is TJ Hoosman's out of time now for Darnell's question of the day. Best seller. Darnell, take it away. Yes, sir. Let's move to Antonio Brown who reportedly will not be placed on the commissioner's exempt list and is likely to play this Sunday against the Dolphins. A.B. has been practicing with the Patriots all week, even working out at the TB12 facility with Tom Brady's guy, Alex Guerrero. Mm. But it's still unclear how exactly he'll fit into the offense. Got to ask you guys, what do you expect out of A.B. this week? Not a whole lot. They won't need much from him in Miami. Uh, Bill uh, Belichick's going to take it easy on his guy, Brian Flores. So, you know, I see two or three catches. And two or three? Two or three catches. Are you playing or AB? AB. You better get that boy. Like, don't need him. It doesn't matter if they need him. They run the short intermediate game better than any team in this league. Yeah. And you talk about crossing routes. Yeah. You're always going to be open. Look what Pittsburgh was trying to yeah. do out there. Play man against that. You done. Try to play zone. He's going to pick you apart. It's like he's going to get five catches, 80 yards. Look, Moss, first game, I think it was nine for 183. It won't be that. Moss was all there for all the training camp. Yeah, exactly. It won't be that. But I think five for 80, 80 some I yards. Got three for, for 47. Ooh. Us. I don't. I don't <laughs> expect a lot. I'm, I'm probably in the three to four catches, 60, 50 okay. to 60 yards. And the reason is number one, they're gonna blow Miami out. He shouldn't play a lot. Number two is mm. if this offense is as sophisticated as been reported over the years, he doesn't know the whole offense, so he's gonna be in in bits and pieces of the game. The targets are not gonna be there. That that's what's it. Somebody has to take a back seat in this offense, and. A.B. is going to have to tread lightly. These, even if he gets one catch, he's not going to like it, but he's going to have to put on a smiley face like he's yeah. okay with it. Yeah, I don't, Been I, there. I don't think that they're going to use him very much. I think that they're really going to, to take care of this situation. I don't think they're going to just thrust him into a situation where he can fail, which makes them look like failure. So I don't expect much. I think it would be a moderate look. Um, it could be... Put a number on it, Coach. I, I, I'll give him... I mean... Maybe three or four. Uh, three or four is safe. It's, it's, he's not going to get a heavy workload, and I'm not even sure he'll get very many reps. I like that in the point game. because of no preseason, yes, not a lot of football think. activity because of all of the issues and distractions. Are you coming it's down, like, Marshall? No, are you coming down? It's called five for eighty. Oh, you five still for say, eighty. You still that's still that's five. low for him. That's five for eighty. I'm How going many there. targets he gonna get? Five. <laughs> oh, okay. They okay. ain't trying to force oh, it over. They ain't gonna try to. I've been back to Wally's. Uh, the reason why is, if you remember last week, I guaranteed Pittsburgh was going to beat uh, oh, New England. You. Yes, you did. I don't and know I why. Bet but you uh, three guys. Look at this pretty uh, thing. Uh, this, 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 this ain't water, water baby. This, this ain't water, water baby. Water. <laughs> I'll take you to dinner tonight. Don't worry about yes. it. Yes. Yes. How are you, girl? <laughs> and can we get another one? Antonio gets more than 40 yards. No, no. How about y'all give me one for telling you last night? Uh, the the Tampa Bay was gonna win. Well, that he did. Oh. Hey, he did. That, but you didn't bet it uh, though. That's uh, on Fox in the in the Super <laughs> Six. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That's Terry Bradshaw's money. Hell yeah, Bradshaw money. That ain't got nothing to do with my casa. Anyway, Gracias. I paid up. Have, you, have you. you had casa donuts before? Never had. Oh, it. never oh had it's gonna going. change your life. Right. You don't drink okay. those. I don't drink. Somebody, my oh, wife. Oh, will drink it's this. your boy. Yeah, I know. Guess what, football fans? Odell Beckham Jr. has found something new to whine about. Mm, back at it Greg again. Greg Williams tried to hurt it, OBJ. <laughs> Williams, of course, is the longtime NFL defensive coordinator who previously worked for the Cleveland Browns, but now is the D.C. of the New York Jets, Cleveland's opponent this Sunday. OBJ says his new Cleveland teammates told him that Williams instructed the Browns to hurt it him <laughs> in a 2017 preseason game. Here's video of a Cleveland defensive back making a routine tackle on OBJ in that game and OBJ reacting like he was a victim of a terrorist attack. And here's OBJ whining about it yesterday. I had players on this team telling me that that's what he was telling them to do, um, take me out of the game in this preseason. So you just, you just know who he is. Uh, just, just the man, that's the man calling the plays. I had people who, who were here when he was here telling us, um, you know, if you get a chance, take a shot at him. If, if, you, if you can, you know, hurt him. I guarantee he's going to leave the game hurt. 
and stuff like that. Greg Williams tried to hurt it in OBJ. Oh, God. <laughs> Football is not a sport for whiners. <laughs> Hell, sports aren't for whiners. They're not for perpetual victims. OBJ's victimhood energy is toxic for a team. It's great that OBJ is a productive individual performer. He's still bad for your football culture. I'm not sure if OBJ understands the culture of football. Greg Williams, like a lot of football people, thinks OBJ is mentally weak. They think he'll tap out, just like he did in that 2017 preseason game when a defensive back made a routine hard hit on OBJ's leg. Football isn't quite like boxing or mixed martial arts, but football is a game of submission, or as Max Kellerman likes to say, an imposition of will. You try to impose your will on another man through brute force. Greg Williams isn't unique. He was made the scapegoat of New Orleans' bounty gate scandal because the league needed to publicly push back against football's inherent culture of physical submission by any means necessary. Mm. OBJ is unique. He's loud, shameless, a whiner in a sport that has little respect for such behavior. OBJ wakes up every day looking to be made a victim. His mindset is problematic for a football team. Hell, it's a problem for a volleyball team. OBJ is best suited for an individual sport like tennis. He's more John McEnroe than Jerry Rice. Mm. All right, guys, Marcellus, get us started. Is Odell's constant whining a problem for the Browns? All right, let me uh, first defend Odell before I offend the same <laughs> Odell. Um, but first, let's defend him. We have to acknowledge in situations like this, which are provoked moments, um, you're, you're facing a team that has their defense coordinator, Greg Williams, you're actually provoked to have these comments, not necessarily every single word, but the conversation goes towards, you know what he's been through, you know who he is, you know what about Bounty Gate, et cetera. So you're provoked in that moment, and you have to acknowledge that, and we have to know the difference between a comment and a complaint, a comment and whining, because without context, they can look the same. Now, let me offend him. Um, Every time, <laughs> every time I heard the bounty gate going down and people talking about it, I was like, do y'all understand that when someone says go out there and hurt someone, that's redundant it's to re my it's intentions. Re it's, re oh, it's redundant to my intentions. Not a single play ever did I play football on the defensive side. I didn't try to hurt you. I didn't say injure. I said hurt you. Mm. There were moments I wanted to injure you, which means you're out this game, you play next week. But every single play, I'm trying to hurt you. It's a message being sent. Mm. I want you to know you felt me on that play. So, Odell, you can't be the gazelle complaining about the lions out there can't in the jungle. It. They're roaring. They're yeah. trying to eat me. Yes. Damn right we are every single time, even if coach says it or he doesn't say it. So know where you are. Man, we just argued about this. In the back? In the back. Me, Marcellus, and Reggie Bush about this. LeVar, man. LeVar. Yeah, what is going on, LeVar. LeVar. You and LeVar. <laughs> so look, Doc. LeVar, man. So this is what happens. <laughs> it was a preseason game when it happened by Greg Williams, coach player. You like, damn, you really gonna hit me like this in a preseason game? It's a pre if I'm out there, I'm a starter. Mm. You out there, you a starter. We on the team. Yeah. Why you hit me like this in a preseason? So he looks back on that play. Mm. And so now what he's doing is he's just letting the refs in the NFL know, bro, watch him, please. Don't let them anything, hurt at me. Please. Any, anything to get an advantage. Right. Is it is it whining? <laughs> or is it lot. just look, the last time I played against this guy, mm -hmm. his defense. In a preseason game, mm. I got hurt. I'm not trying to get hurt in a regular Everything season game. Everything that comes out of OBJ's mouth is a complaint, man. Everything. Could he just come out one day and just say, you know what, I can't wait for this competition this week. I'm going to man up and go out here and compete. And I'm gonna he going to ball. This. He, I, I, I expect him to have a great game. Play, on my I'm life. not going to make it about Greg Williams because it's about if his whining is a problem. But just super quickly about Greg Williams. I played on defenses with Greg Williams in Washington. And Greg Williams is a very animated and very, like, if you want to talk potty mouth, I played for two of the most <laughs> potty mouth dudes ever in the history of the game. Ever. Matter of fact, three. Ray Bob, Ray Rose. Oh, Ray Rose. Lord. And, and Greg Williams, I said, and this, is, this tells you all you need to know if you know the history of this game. Greg Williams' mouth is worse than Ray Bob's mouth. That's all right? crazy. That's crazy. Dale Lindsay is probably one one B. I played with Dale. He's one B to to <laughs> Ray Bob being one uh, one Ray A. Rose. And, yep. and 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 so, anyways, 
Is the whining going to become a problem? It will become an issue in that locker room if this team continues on the trajectory they're on right now. If they're winning, people will tolerate the star the of the team. whine about when you're winning. They'll oh, tolerate. he'll find a reason. It, it, They'll it, it, tolerate it's not received it, as whining. It's right. the same exact word. They'll tolerate it because it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, it, it's, it's like a, a, a fly buzzing in your face versus a yellow jacket, right? <laughs> if a yellow jacket is in your face, you're going to get that thing out of your face. If it's a fly, you're just going to swat it away like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. If they're winning... It's just a fly deal. Like, ah, it's just OBJ. No, all this wine, it, it just don't mm. work in football. Uh, y'all three married, and all three of y'all are winning. But y'all know there's some complaining going on, too. Every day. And y'all winning. So winning don't fix whining. If somebody's a whiner, they going to find a reason to whine. That's true. And that's But we know how to compartmentalize. Now, yeah. put it if where he's winning individually within the team concept of them winning... It oh, works out. Because it becomes, he has to. Now becomes, he's gonna have to be winning individually. Is your, is your oh, wife yeah. winning, TJ? Don't do that. Don't do that. She's oh, winning. She, she better say she's winning. And she winning. finds reasons to. Oh, you right. <laughs> you right. You right. Oh, me too. You right. You right. Right. You're right. She ain't the only one. But it takes two still, to tango. I be still. complaining. <laughs> Don't let none of this fool you. I be in the house tripping. But it still fits <laughs> the fabric. It still fits the fabric of your your home makeup of your home makeup. That complaining fits. You learn how to communicate through it. Yeah. I but, agree. At home, you expect but it. But if you're losing, well, football is your home. Yeah, that's their home. Being those in are the Cleveland Browns, those are right. So, right, right. but if you're losing, not complaining, like if I'm having a bad week and and my wife is is complaining at me, it's a different it's a different approach to it. Like I don't I don't have the patience, I don't have the reserve built up to deal with that complaining. So I have to remove myself from it. So if Odell is doing it and it's a bad week, right? You're looking at it from that perspective. If, it's going to be a problem. I don't want to hear you complaining if we struggling. I'm fighting for my that's job. The, oh, if you struggling and you complaining, I don't, don't want to hear you. You know what happens when you care about your you watch. complaints and we struggling? Yeah. Team meeting, players only. Yeah. Well, if we don't, if yes. that doesn't save us, there you go. Oh, we gonna start Done. shooting each other out. Right. But that's if you win it, we good. Oh, we good. Man, okay. OBJ, it's cool, we man. Good. We got but, your back. But let's don't act like we all don't have friends or a former friend. It's like, oh, I know what I'm getting. Oh, he's gonna be at the club. I know what I'm getting. Uh -huh. I'm gonna hear blah blah blah. This this uh -huh. is enough. He ain't gonna put it in on the tab. Yep. <laughs> again, and so, there's again, you can, know who you are. I, I can think of a, I can think of a guy on my college football team. I'm not gonna call his name. Charles. But, but everybody, everybody's like, damn, here, this dude just brings the energy down. Mm. Every he's always whining and complaining. He's mm. this is that. His, his girl ain't treating him right. It was always something. Yeah. And it's like. Damn, where's the positive energy at? Good point. And that's my OBJ. Because you find yourself catering to that type of personality. Yeah. Because you and know that what you're going to And that becomes yeah. a problem Within if, a team. We're, if we're not winning. If we're not winning. If we're winning. You can complain. If we're winning, Man, we can winning contain Winning masks a lot of things. Everything. We can contain you yeah. being that way. Yeah. But if we're losing and we got to cater to you complaining right. about this, that, and the other, that's a problem. Okay, but that's LeVar, a problem. LeVar, you're a coach. Yes. And players. Adversity is going to hit every Bro, team. I'm dealing with it every Every week. team. Yes. yes. And if the leader, the biggest personality on your team is a whiner, that spreads like poison. If, if, if again, because again, all these guys like attention. Everybody likes to, to some degree, wake up and read something about them in the paper. Mm. And if whining is the way to get but into here's the paper. What, here's what I'll say to that. And in, a, in an environment where a leader becomes a complainer, another leader is given the opportunity and the ability to trans or ascend being a, a leader. Culture war. They will be, he will be, he will lose his step. Odell, if he's a leader yeah. in that locker room, he will lose where he's, the pedestal that he may be on. He removes himself from that if that's what happens. Yep. So somebody else gains. It doesn't spread like poison. What happens is, is somebody else is anointed. If TJ is our leader and for some reason he isn't leading the way that he's leading, Jarvis and Marcellus, the there you go. And, and that's why it doesn't spread like that's poison. Right. Yeah. I think that it, but he 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 effectively so that's, so that's he what, takes himself out of that conversation. Which and is, you take yourself out of the conversation if you don't produce, and you multiply that when you don't produce and you complain. Sure. Because then it has to be an no, alignment to our team goals, yes. right? Yes. So we ain't gonna just protect. How quick we'll, can a narrative change if they go out here and run over 
the Jets. The, you already know Very how quick. Goes. Very well, quick. And it's just one week, one game, and then the narrative will change. I, it'll be tough to change the narrative this week because the Jets are so damaged. And back no, quarterback. Yeah, right. but that's what damages the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be hard to change it. But you're right. If they win, it'll be like the Bengals that would kid themselves that they could oh. get away with <laughs> Chad Johnson's <laughs> antics. And it only bit them in the rear end in postseason every time. They would be more susceptible <laughs> in wow. New York to Odell being that way than in Cleveland because he hasn't been in Cleveland long enough to have that type of impact. Whitlock and Wiley, LeVar Arrington, and Brady Papinga are back. Let's move to this week's biggest matchup where the Rams host the Saints Sunday in a rematch of last year's thrilling NFC Championship game. Of course, we all remember how that game ended with a controversial non-call on a pass interference against the Rams that helped L.A. get the win and led to weeks of outrage from the Saints and their fans. All right, the question here is, will bitterness help the Saints beat the Rams this weekend? And no, I don't think it's going to have a damn thing to do with bitterness. <laughs> I think they're going to beat the brakes off the Rams Ooh. because Jared Goff is overpaid and not as good as Drew Brees. Ooh, wow. Mm. And that's the entire team, huh? Yeah. Or that's just all that Quarterback, matters. Quarterback, most important. I will, I, I, I will, there, I will huh? quote the great coach Joe White, my running backs coach mm. at Columbia, who says, don't get bitter, get better. So when adversity hits, <laughs> when something bad happens, you over there being preoccupied with that is not getting better. Let that go. So this is a situation I think when you look at what the Saints have been through, they held on to that a lot more than I thought that they should. I've been through a very difficult playoff loss in the Music City Miracle. Mm. And, woo, mm. Buffalo hasn't been the same since. Right. Oh, <laughs> man. I don't think we won a playoff game since. I don't so, know if you've been back to the playoffs since. Right? Exactly, my point. It's so, look, I'm not going to predict that doom for this team, but at the same time, if you think that that's going to be a translation, what you're feeling emotionally to what happens on this field, you're mistaking yourself. Mm. That said, I think the Saints are going to look good out there. Oh, you like the Saints too? I think I like the Saints too as well. I think the Saints are going to go out there and win. Not right. beat the brakes off them, though. Calm down. Pray. Pray for why? Pray for why? Pray for some of this bitterness going around here. All right? All right? Saints are going to win, and they are going to play with a little bit of bitterness in their hearts and in their minds. You know why? Because you're that close to getting another crown for the city of New Orleans. I, I, I think yeah. that um, I think that they come in with a ton of motivation based off of that because they felt they were the better team. And they were able to get that, that last second heroics last week. They're riding a high off of that. So now it's kind of like take the, the fact that, well, maybe we were supposed to lose this game, but we somehow, some way found a way to win it. All right? Mm -hmm. Now we're going up against a team that played in the Super Bowl. They took our spot. They punched their ticket over us over a fluke play. Let's make sure that we leave this game and not let them think that that game should have gone the way that it went outside of us. So, yeah, they'll yeah. be bitter about it. Because the reality is, is last year the Saints was, they were the best team in all football. Mm. And they know that, hey, if we would have got into the Super Bowl, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Mm. And lo and behold, guess what? what? That? Where that fact come from? Yes. <laughs> oh. mm. what, what you got on your sheet? Yeah, right? it's just oh, crazy. Some of this madness. It's just, <laughs> just a little breakdown. Just a little breakdown I'm telling you about right now. And I'm going to tell you right now that they're the best team in football right now. And so oh, they're going to wow. be motivated based off of last year for mm. the reasons you mentioned that, hey, the Rams took our spot. They, they went there off of a fluke call. We're going to go prove it that that was a fluke. And we're going to go bring it to them. Because you know, I'm going to tell you, man, they are dangerous on offense. Their defense is good, but it's just that offense, man. We all stop. We all stop. Nightmare to defend. These stakes are not the same, so this revenge is not going to be, be be a part oh, this of this. This isn't just one it week is. with them. This it is. is a no, whole, it is. So you lost an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl last year, and you're going to now redeem that by a week two win. But no, but but think about, uh, think about think about that Le doesn't work. Levar, 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 hold on, man. Levar, right? <laughs> hold on, it, it hold on for Pinga. Listen to this. Like, it doesn't I, equate. Understand this. Yes. If you can find motivation. Yeah. And you can find it from something as big as that moment was for that team. Mm -hmm. You'll use it. But I can't You'll pour use all of that into this. Nobody said pour it all into it, uh, but you're going to use it. Look, that game's gone. It, it's like Ricky and Boys in the Hood. He gone. But no if matter what Doe Boy does, he ain't coming back. No when matter you, what you do, I'm going to go, 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 go get him. I'm going to go to Swift. You it's came from the rap. same place as me. You came from the same place as me. If you got beat up on the street and you went home. Yeah. 
what they gonna tell you to do? Call your uncle. They gonna go crip on them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna, gonna, the gonna, <laughs> gonna take you back. They gonna take you back. They gonna take you back. I hear you. I hear you. On crip, they gonna take you back. <laughs> hey, and you gonna fight. Yeah, yeah. You gonna have to fight, it's right? That same day, you gotta I, keep I, going I back. I do think the bitterness of last year will play a small role in terms of the, the Saints' focus all this week. But I think one of the things that was completely overlooked last weekend, Jared Goff did not play well. No. Nope. And I don't think it's a I don't think it's a coincidence. I think he's overvalued. Do I think he's trash? No. <laughs> but I think he's overvalued. And in comparison to Drew Brees, he's really not in the same planet. And the guy's got what do you get, 134 million or whatever? Mm. I, I just, I think he gets He exposed. dueled with Drew Brees last year in the playoffs at, on the road. What do but you hey, think about that body of work? But listen, there's a problem. And, and you brought it up, Jason. He got paid. Imagine when you get paid. There's a whole level of expectations that are all of a sudden there yeah, sure. that weren't there before. I've been there, and you gotta, yeah, We've all probably been there yeah, in some, yeah. some respect. And did others. you play better or at least fully motivated? Oh, I, I, was I wanted fun. to earn that money I just yeah, got. Yeah, but it changes everything. How? Especially for him. Well, he, he just broke a record. He just got paid the most money guaranteed in the history of the NFL to any player. And Jared Goff, I don't know if you – I don't know the guy personally, but just looking at him – he doesn't seem like one of those alpha male guys oh, that wow. says, hey, man, oh, put it all go. on me. Oh. I'm, just telling you. Right. I'm just telling you right the now. And so don't even know where the sun rises. I don't even know. I don't even know the capital listen, of listen, Iowa listen, anymore listen, either. Listen, that listen. In the fourth grade, I, don't, I did. I don't even know <laughs> if he feels in his heart that he's worth that money. Thank oh, you. That's wow. kind of where he's at psychologically. Man, what show are we doing? I'm just telling you, that's where he's at. Please, I'm ready to go to break. Take me to break. All right, Darnell. Y'all have not what been we watching. Missed? Yeah, man. Speaking of the Saints and Rams, uh, that matchup is part of our new free-to-play game, Super 6 NFL Sunday. We're like Marcellus. Give me your pick and your score. Mm. Uh, again, I'm picking the Saints. I got them winning this game 35-24. Mm. I don't even know what. Uh, the Rams are probably favorite. Yeah. So get on the Saints on the money line. I got the Saints. Uh, it's going to be a closer one. Uh, and I'll say 27 to 19. <laughs> uh, they lead the league in sacks, at six sacks in week one. They bring that pass rush on the road with them. Make it close, but still Saints prevail. All right, guys. So someone in Minnesota actually won the Thursday Night Football Super 6 last night. Oh. Out of 70,000 people who entered, one guy went six for six and took home the 25 grand. So before the game kicks off on Sunday, download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play Super 6 NFL Sunday for free for a chance to win even more cash, $250,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money. Mm, that you. sounds real good to me. Uncle Jimmy's here. You know these things, man. <laughs> you do. <know. laughs> it's going to help us talk about Cam Newton, but uh, your big dummy of the day? Yeah. Big nah. dummy of the day. Goes to you. Uh, yes. By the way, uh, since we're getting big dummy, I'd like to introduce you to your co-host. This is Marcellus Wiley, and it's not LeVar Arrington, <laughs> since you called him that three times. <laughs> How many times did he do it? He did about three times. I just want to let him know who I just want him to know who he's working with. Good. Right. The Good. man's name is Marcellus Cassius Wiley. All right, let's talk some Cam <laughs> Newton. He <laughs> struggled again Close. last night in a loss to the Buccaneers. The Panthers are now 0-2 on the year, and Cam has pretty much been taking all the blame for their rocky start. Marcellus, do you think Ron Rivera is getting a pass because of Cam's struggle? Uh, I certainly can highlight one play where he's getting a pass. So, yeah, uh, that, that, that one yard to go f to win the game. And mm, they come out like in a wide bunch with Cam Newton opposite doing a seal block. That's 100% times we're running sweep behind the bunch. And that's why there were three defenders just waiting for Christian McCaffrey in that play. It was a horrible play by design, assignment, alignment, execution, and philosophy. Come on, Ron Rivera. You know better than that. Mm, I didn't like the challenge you did late. All right, Uncle Jimmy, you got a take here on Cam? Yes, I do. Right, yeah, what? Right now, I need that cameraman right there to zoom in to me. I need you to look at me and look at me good. Too many <laughs> lotros, too many not. I am Cam Newton. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> right now, this is what Cam Newton is. <laughs> Y'all used to think Cam Newton is Superman. <laughs> Last night, Cam Newton looked a hot mess without an ass on his chest. <laughs> Ooperman. Cam this is what Cam Newton's been reduced to. Chewed bubble gum? That's the boy is a family dollar superhero. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is it's pitiful. The boy done been reduced to a mere mortal. <laughs> the boy ain't got no more powers. <laughs> Listen to me. 
<laughs> l listen to me, Carolina Panthers. <laughs> listen to me good. Click. Cam Newton ain't Superman. <laughs> He's Clark Spent. <laughs> Did you hear me, Marcus? <laughs> the boy Spent. I know. No, he ain't. I'm gonna tell y'all what. Right now, I believe the end zone is laced with kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was fourth and one from the two. Okay? I guarantee you, my nephew could have got that one yard. <laughs> I had to throw a McGrib up under the pile. <laughs> it wouldn't have been too pretty, <laughs> but we'd have got that damn first down. Oh, man. Uh, let me say, let me ask you another question. What, How what? the hell Cam gonna look like the weekend on a weekday? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm gonna tell you, I hate to admit it, but you're right, nephew. Oh, There's some similarities between Cam Newton and Dennis Rodman. Uh, I, hey, we you. laughed when he dyed his hair. <laughs> Next thing you know, he getting married. We come out to the wedding pictures. He come out to live on wearing the dress. <laughs> it wasn't so funny, was it? <laughs> All I'm trying to tell y'all is, Man. look here, just cause Cam show up dressing like Suge Avery from the color purple, <laughs> ain't no damn excuse for him playing like her. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you this from the color purple, Cam. Until you score a touchdown, <laughs> everything you do, you gonna fail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are goofy. That's, That's so true. good. He ain't scored a touchdown in four games, four straight Everything games. Everything you do, <laughs> you gonna fail, man. <laughs> oh, man, your suit. I know, Jack. <laughs> All right, what, what costume is that, by the way? Who are you? Too many Nacho Libre. What? Nacho n Libres. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. He just you know. grabbed it. All right, listen. Yeah. I want to get to my, my approval job. rating for Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to my approval rating. It's taken a major hit. Major. Major Scout hit. I dropped team Cam Newton. Seven points in job performance all the way down to a five. Ooh. Ooh. I'm taking some all-time greatness away. I mean, oh, whoa. Eight straight two games. Two games? Yeah, eight straight oh, down to a two. 14. Mm. Uh, character, I'll stay the same. Authenticity, I think he's got a little identity crisis going on, so I'll drop him down to a 10 there. Uh. 46. We see now a lot of that going all, on. Yeah, exactly. All yeah. I do is drop the job performance because that wasn't a Cam Newton-like performance. But all-time greatness stays the same. I told you, eight Hall of Famers have had eight game losing streaks or more before. So he's still an all-star in my book because you don't disrespect the MVP like that. Internet has him at a dumpster fire, Marcellus. Oh, they don't like his clothes. They, they like agree his. with me once again. Yeah, they're old I don't even internet. Like the internet. They, they, they might need to go to the gun show with me.